Hi and welcome to a lesson on solving unknowns in the exponent. We've already learned what the exponential form looks like. That's this one. And that's when I say that a base with an exponent is equal to an answer. And we saw that the that can be rewritten in the logarithmic form. What that means is that log with a certain base and now on the inside the input of that log is now the, what used to be the answer and the result is the exponent so for example 2 to the power of 3 we know is 2 times 2 times 2 that gives me 8 that can be rewritten in the logarithmic form as log with base 2 and the input now is the 8 not the exponent and the output is the value of the exponent. In other words, how many times must 2 be multiplied by itself to get 8? So that is what the logarithmic question is. Why? How many times must I multiply the base to get the value that's inside the log? Here we see that we have to multiply it 3 times by itself. Now to solve an equation where my unknown is in the exponent, I can see that it is actually very easy there is my exponent and now my exponent is not in the exponent anymore but it's actually also just one of the factors in an expression so if I had the expression 2 to the power of let's say x is equal to 32 we know that the question is actually how many times must 2 be multiplied by itself to get 32 but that is exactly the same as asking this question where I swap or it seems almost like I'm swapping my exponent and my answer and here we see we have solved for x x is now on its own on the one side and this method is extremely useful in order for us to solve exponential equations especially when we have something like this 2 to the power of x is equal to 3 this one does not help very much when I'm trying to do it with inspection for example I can't think of okay let's start with 1 2 to the power of 1 is 2 okay so it's bigger than 1 so 2 to the power of 2 is 4 Oh, that's too big. So somewhere between 1 and 2. The question is, what is the number? It's going to be actually an irrational number. And the way we are going to do it is by saying, okay, well, we can write this in a logarithmic form. Log base 2 input 3 will give me the answer for x. The problem, however, is, again, I can't do this. I can't solve that equation out of my head. I'm definitely going to need a calculator. Now let's just quickly look at just the calculator that we have here on the computer. On the computer, we actually see we don't have a, we have a log, but we don't have a log where we can change the base to the number 2. The base here is automatically 10. So we have to work with a base 10. And to do that, we're going to have to look at a different way of approaching this problem. And yet it comes down to the same thing. Imagine now that we have our previous problem. 2 to the power of x is equal to 3. Now something that we need to understand is that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. They are exactly the same thing. There's no difference between the two except the way it is expressed. The one is written as 2 to the power of x. On the other side we have 3. That means whatever I do to the one side, I will get exactly the same result if I do the same thing on the other side. So let's say for example th this represented a CD and that represented a CD. If I put both of these CDs into a CD player, sorry, that's not very pretty CDs, okay? But if I put both of those CDs into a CD player, 
both of them will play the same music. Why? Because they are the same. They might have different covers, they might look different, but they are in fact the same in essence. Now that means whatever I can do to this, if I do it to that, it will still remain the same. So what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to take log base 10. Now remember, when we have a base 10, we do not need to write it. So I'm not going to write it. Okay? I take a log base 10, and what I do is I put 2 to the power of x inside as the input of that log. Now I know I'll get the same answer by doing that as if I do log and I put in a 3. Why? Because these things are exactly the same. This kind of represents a CD player and I'm putting the same CD inside both even though they look different. Which means they're going to play the same music. Now once I have that, I can see, okay, that this power we've learned before, that power can be multiplied to the front of that log. In other words, I can write it as x log 2 is equal to log of 3. And now once again we see the power of the logs has given us the potential of taking an exponent and making it a factor. So all I need to do is solve for x and x is being multiplied with a log 2. So I divide both sides with a log 2 and here it's crucial to understand a piece that if I'm talking about a log 2 I do not mean that log is distinct from 2. They are one thing, they come together. Okay? It is one thing. In other words, I can't go on this side and cancel my logs. Okay. They divide into each other and my is 3 over 2. No, 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 no. They aren't factors in themselves. It's a function. Like sine and cos, it's a function. So, on this side, I yes, I can. I can cancel the whole thing because it's a value. It's a number. So they can cancel on that side. They just divide into each other to give me one. And I'm left with log 3 over log 2. Now also, this is not equal to log 3 over 2. Remember that. It's not log 3 over 2. It's log 3 divided by log 2. And for that, we can use our calculator. Yours might uh, function a little bit different the way that you type it in. Okay, you might have to press log first. On the computer calculator, I press 3 first, and then log, divided by 2, and then log. But you can see here in the top, it still puts log 3 divided by log 2. I still have to press equal. And there we go, our answer, 1,58496. Let's keep a few commas. Uh, usually you can do two decimal places. One comma five eight four nine six two. Now, obviously, if I round, I get an answer. One comma five. Well, this is also rounded. I didn't. It's an approximate answer. I didn't go on. It's an irrational number. It can go on for very much more than what I have. 1,58. I wanted that big number just so that I can prove to you that we did not make a mistake. We have 2 to the power of 1,584962. Let's test that. Okay, 2 to the power of 1.58. And there's many more, but that's what we got. And we see 2,99999. And if we do round at this stage, we will get the answer 1,58.